Salam, fourth graders. That is hello in Amharic. It's Miss Mayani here again today, and I'll be um, teaching Making Meaning Lesson Day 3. Um, yes, this week we, we've been reading the story Flight. Yesterday we reread the first half of the story. Um, today we'll be rereading the second half of the story. We've been, this week we've been practicing um, giving reasons to support our opinions. We've also been practicing making inferences using clues in the text. And yesterday we were taking notes on what we thought were the most important ideas. Um, so if you have your student response book, we're gonna be using that again today, page 82. Um, and we're gonna do the conversation procedure that we did yesterday called Think, Pair, Write, where after I ask the question, we're gonna first think to ourselves. we're gonna talk about it with a partner um, if we have one, and then we're gonna write down what we think is the most important idea. So remember, we're trying to support our our opinions with evidence from the text. So when you're responding to these questions, I want you to use the speaking frame, the reason I think this is. So here are some of the important ideas that we took notes on together from the first half of the story yesterday. So far, we think that the most important ideas are that Lindbergh will attempt what no one has done before to fly from New York to Paris, and that he was afraid, but he did it and he took off anyways. Um, you also stopped and took notes on your own. So um, today I'm gonna do um, some modeling, but you're also gonna do some note taking and discussing on your own with a partner if you have one. The night is endless. He wishes for the sun to rise. Dawn comes slowly, growing out of the gray mist. Will the fog never end, he wonders? The clouds change color, from green to gray and from gray to red and gold. Lindbergh has been in the air for 23 hours. He is 2,300 miles from New York and has 1,300 miles to go. He feels completely alone in the world. He feels as if he were flying through all eternity. He tries to stay on course, but because of his constantly curving route, he is not always sure. Here and there, the clouds seem to break apart. From high up, he sees far below him the ocean. From high up, it is like a great blue shaft with gray walls. Then he flies into the clouds again, into the unchanging mist. The day comes on brighter and warmer. Sometimes he, see, he imagines he sees land. No, it is only the flickering shapes of the clouds and water, 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 endless water. It is 7.30 in the morning in New York and Paris is over a thousand miles away. There's no alternative but death and failure, he writes. Flying closer to the water, Lindbergh sights a porpoise, leaping above the waves. He spies a seagull. Then, fishing boats. Something quickens in Lindbergh's blood. He guides the spirit of St. Louis carefully down and down to just above a boat. He throttles the plane and calls out a question. Which way, he shouts, is Ireland? He hopes for a word. He longs for a wave, a warmer welcome back to the fellowship of men. It is 10.52 in the morning, New York time. Lindbergh sees in the distance low mountains. Now he is awake with new hope. Land is near. He quickly unfolds a map across his knees. He flies over the southern tip of Ireland. He is right on course. Cows graze on green hills. People in horse-drawn carts look up and wave. He could land in Ireland, but decides to go on. He wants to complete his dream. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to do the, the think pair right. 
So I'm gonna take a moment, I'm gonna think about what were the most important ideas of part, the part we just heard. I'm gonna talk about it with my conversation partner and then I'm gonna write it down in my student response book. So let me think about it. Well, Lobster, I think the most important idea that happened in the part of the story we just heard is that Lindbergh has made it all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and he has made it to the other side and he sees land. Um, so what I'm gonna write on my page here is that Lindbergh has made it across the ocean. It is 1.52 in the afternoon, New York time, as he crosses England. It is Lindbergh's 31st hour in the air. He crosses more water. The wide day is slowly ebbing toward twilight. When he sees land, the coast of France, children run out of their houses and watch him fly by. He continues on. Then Lindbergh spies a glow ahead of him. Paris! I am here, I am here. A great joy wells up inside him. For a moment, he does not want the flight ever to end. Huddled inside his tiny box house, folded in the dense hum of the airplane's engine, he loves the strange closeness to the clouds and sky. It is 4.52 in the afternoon, New York time, Lindbergh's 40, 34th hour in the air. From above, all Lindbergh sees are many, many small lights. But now he must concentrate on just one thing, the sod coming up to meet me. Closer, 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 the plane touches the ground. It bounces, rolls, hugs the solid earth. It is 1022 Paris time. The flight has taken 33 and a half hours. So now I want you to take a moment and think about what are what is an important idea in the part of the story you just heard? What is the most important idea to understand and remember? As you're thinking about your responses, I want you to also consider why does the idea that you thought seem the most important? What other ideas seemed important as you listened to the passage? Why might, th might, why might those ideas be important? Thousands of people are running toward the plane. For a moment, Lindbergh is dazed. It seems to him as if he were drowning in a great sea. Some people surrounded the plane, cheering, but Lindbergh can hardly hear them. His ears seem to have been deafened by the hours of roaring engine. Crowds pull him out of the cockpit. Men and women are calling his name over and over. They carry him on their shoulders. Others begin to tear pieces of the plane. More than anything else, Lindbergh wants to save the spirit of St. Louis. His first words are a question. Are there any mechanics here? But no one speaks English. Finally, two French aviators arrive to help him. Policemen guard the plane. The aviators take Lindbergh away from the still cheering crowd. In the airfield's hangar, he tells the story of his flight to the other pilots the cramped cockpit, the aloneness, the long, long night. Meanwhile, unknown to Lindbergh, newspaper headlines all over the world are beginning to blaze in the news. American hero safe in Paris. Lindbergh is driven off to the American embassy. He answers more questions about his flight. He has not slept in over 60 hours. 
Finally, at 4.15 in the morning, he goes to bed. When he wakes, his life will be changed forever. When he wakes, there will be a huge parades and medals and speeches. He will be the most famous man in the world. It is the year 1927. It is 1927 and his name is Charles Lindbergh. What is an important idea about the part of the story you just heard? What, what is most important to understand and remember? Remember to think about why do you think that is the most important part and what other important ideas might there be and why might they be important? I want to take a moment and have us reflect on Think Fair Right. How did it feel giving reasons for your thinking about the important ideas in the book? Did you change your mind about what was important in a passage? For your individualized daily reading, you're going to continue using the reading comprehension strategies and fix-up strategies. If you have sticky notes, I want you to take sticky notes and mark when, you're, when and where you're using those strategies. So if you realize that you're visualizing, you're seeing details in the story that cause you to see a picture in your head, I want you to take a sticky note and write visualize. If you made a prediction about what you think is gonna happen next in the story, I want you to put prediction. Um, if you identified a story element, like the setting or the plot or a character, you could write story element. Um, it's really, what I wanna encourage my readers to do is um, practice noticing when they're using those strategies and where they're using them and seeing how it's helping them. With your conversation partner, um, or you can use your reading journal, I want you to, to um, after you're done doing your individualized daily reading, why don't you talk about the book that you read? Remember to um, always read the title um, of the book, the author, and give a little description of what the book is about. And maybe you can talk about some of the comprehension strategies that you were using to help support your reading and how they helped you. And as a reminder, whenever you're discussing um, your reading and giving your opinions, don't forget to use reasons and evidence from the text and you can practice using the speaking frame, the reason I think this is. All right, that's all I have for you today. We're gonna to do a little bit more writing tomorrow and hear from a little bit more about Charles Lindbergh. So I will see you tomorrow.